Come check out wave five of the brand new Armada ships from FFG. Spiking bits. All right, welcome back, Star Wars Armada Maniacs. Surprise, new releases. It's crazy out there. Wow, who expected that? We got the last wave of Armada before the new year. So that happened, 2016, booyah. We got wave five and of course, the Corellian Conflict, which will be in a separate video here on the channel, either following or preceding this one. Who knows, it's crazy. We don't know what order we do things around here. <laughs> well, let me tell you what, these ships are actually pretty cool. This is definitely not a uh, filler expansion like we've seen in the past. I feel like a lot of the, sh the cards and upgrades in here are going to have a lasting impression on the game and change up a lot of the ways that we play things currently and can play some of the older stuff more better er it's a technical term i'll look it up so today we're obviously unboxing the phoenix home we got the two new fighter squadrons imperial and rebel pack do and then of course the imperial light cruisers these are very these two ships right here are very similar to each other in nature but the rebel one is a lot more or shares more similarities with the nebulon frigate almost you know a couple things here and there but it's all it's all very interesting once you start like kind of comparing the points values and things like that so let's take a look at the big boy first because i feel like a lot of people are probably ooh, i love big ships <laughs> which may or may not be the way that this game is going i guess if you looked at what the world championships that a lot of people had squadrons, which was kind of a first that we saw for Armada play. So this bad boy here, I think is $30 retail. Of course, it features uh, the command ship here from Star Wars Rebels. Now, I'll admit I'm a little behind on my, my Rebel viewing because I'm one of them poor people I have. I only have uh, Hulu and Netflix as my primary means of entertainment. Now, I was thinking about maybe getting cable, but I don't know. It seems like a good way to get football, but I mean, football season's almost already over, so there is lies in my dilemma. Now, this particular ship here, let me hold it up to the camera for you guys to see it, but you get a good idea. It's another very well-painted ship. Of course, it's going to be on that small stand, and it features, you know, the the kind of, um, what is this, like, uh, rubble kind of beige? Oh, it's not a, it's not an OD but it's definitely very unique to the rebel kind of like alliance paint scheme usually they're they're bright you know reds and things like that but this is a really interesting uh remake of course you know true to the show and everything like that so it's obviously a small ship it's on the small ship stand which you can see right there which looks to be pretty sturdy not like the ones that have been falling apart on a lot of folks from the past expansions let me box this bad boy up so does not to get broken and then we're gonna take a look at the rest of the box so the ship looks totally great right comes with one painted ship and base and fin uh, speed dial two command dials two ship cards 10 upgrade cards and 21 assorted tokens most of that we don't care about but of course everybody wants to see the upgrade cards themselves right so let's check that one out here they are now of course I've already taking a perusal through these so of course you've got the normal cards kind of stuff right here it comes with three defensive tokens then you got your typical command dial thing and of course your shields right there now you can see from the arc on um, the command version right here it's pretty wide flip it over to show you the assault ship and it's very similar the difference between the two is uh, the squadron value so there's that and that so very very similar there Moving on, you will notice in this fantastic pamphlet here that we have a new upgrade icon, and that is the Fantastic Fleet Command. And when I say Fleet Command, it reminds me of an old Atari game because I'm old. I hate to admit it, but I am. And that was one of my favorite games from way, way back in the day, uh, way before we even had an idea that any games like this would be in our future. But let me tell you what, these cards right here, these Fleet uh, with the Fleet Command symbols, we're going to show you here in a second. They are pretty interesting. All right, so for the ships themselves, like I said, these are definitely on par 
with let's zoom in a little bit more for you guys so these are definitely on par with the Imperial Cruiser points wise and also stats wise which you're gonna see in a minute maneuverability wise double clicks at one single clicks at uh, two and or at speed two at two and one right there then you've got your defensive tokens of course you got evade brace and redirect so pretty standard stuff right there one of each no contain of course because I would just be silly or would it <laughs> Front uh, front shields are three, side shields are two, rear are one, which is pretty much to be accept expected. If you go with the assault version, you've got two black at the front along with two red. If you go with the non-assault version, the command, you're rocking blues on your port and starboard as well as your four arcs right there. Everything else is red, of course. And then jumping over to the upgrades here, you'll notice that both have the new fleet command. One has ordnance, one has offensive upgrades, which traditionally have been terrible. But we're going to see some new cards in this set here that I think you will all agree are more than a second look uh, as far as fitting them into your fleets. And then, of course, we've got, what are those? The, I always get some of these little, there's like three that are literally the same. Those are support and then officer. So pretty standard, except for they just added the fleet command right there. And then, of course, you can see the difference between the two as well. They are a five hull point ship with the assault ship being a little bit better at defensive fire against squadrons. The command has a three squadron ability at a difference of a whopping four points. And you, you, you know, you think about it in Armada, you're like, yeah, four points isn't that bad. But then when you really start building your fleets, you're like, man, four points, I could have this like killer upgrade card that I really need and now I don't have it. So that's, uh, sometimes it gets you pretty bad right there. So there's your new commander, Commander uh, Sato and or sato potato potato literally and then you've got your new fleet commands and ashoka rapid launch base which i really like fighter command and combination or coordination team flechette torpedoes and then the two title cards or excuse me the one title card and major durlin for the rebels okay so let's take a look at the commander here so we got commander sato when a friendly ship is attacking at a distance of one of a friendly squadron before rolling attack dice the attacker may replace up to two dice in his attack pool with an equal number of dice of any color or colors so there's our mythical unicorn doing able to consistently do the thing we've always wanted to do where we turn black dice into range three or long range rather that can get kind of crazy because well we all know black dice <laughs> their hips don't lie they do the lord's work in this game and you do not want to get hit with a volley of black dice traditionally you would see it coming because at range one boom hey there's something really close to me i'm gonna get blasted by it but now you're like uh oh range three i still might get blasted by it hmm sad pandas that's a great card right there and i can only imagine how that's really going to shake up the meta then of course we've got the fleet command cards and you got akbar throwing the orchard trap at the start of the ship phase, you may discard, discard, spend an engineering token. If you do until the end of this round, before a friendly ship reveals a command, it may recover a shield. I feel like that's pretty useful for six. Now, these, I guess, are just in play, and you can trigger them by either discarding the card or by paying the cost, which they all seem to have a token, either a squadron, a maneuver, or an engineering. I, I guess that's just how it works, and the only ship so far that has it is the home one. So, or excuse me, not the home one, the Phoenix home. Um, the, the, everything starts out in the same as Star Wars. That's a really interesting mechanic because, I mean, being able to recover a shield, now you have to look at it, you know, playing devil's advocate here because, hey, maybe you not, might not get that shield until you get engaged at turn three, and then you're really only getting shields for three turns, assuming you're not losing ships. So it could be good, it could be bad, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. And then we've got entrapment formation, which... It was really cool because it does the same thing. It's the start of your ship phase. Discard this card or spend a maneuver. If you do, until the end of the round, each friendly ship may change its speed by one during the determined course step. Obviously, a free maneuver for everybody seems good and almost makes flotillas a little redundant at that point, right? All fighters follow me. Again, a really interesting card. So you spend a squadron or you discard it. So if you're in a pinch, you got to discard it, I guess. And... Basically, what this does is, whenever a friendly ship activates, uh, the speed 
If you do until the end of the round, the speed of each squadron in the friendly ship activates is increased by one to a maximum of five until the end of that squadron's activation. So there we go. Now those mythical B-Wing squadrons that everybody always wanted to run, but we really couldn't because the speed's kind of poo-poo. Well, we might have a chance now to do it, and that's really exciting to see. Of course, there's ships out there that are already super fast at five, so this isn't going to, you know, your Tycos and stuff, who cares? But, you know, there is some play here, I feel like, and squadrons are becoming more and more thing. This is something to watch out for. Rapid launch base, another really interesting card. So before deploying fleets, you may set aside a number of friendly squadrons up to your squadron value needed uh, next to your ship card. Now this is an offensive upgrade. You can put this on any ship that has an offensive upgrade capability. You spend a squadron for each squadron you would activate with this command. You may instead place one of your set aside squadrons within distance one. It cannot move this activation. So basically what happens is up to your command or up to your squadron value, boom, their squadrons right next to your ship within one. Holy crap, where did those come from? I don't know, but think about it this way. If you got some fast moving ships, squadrons, you don't have to worry about keeping up with those fast moving ships now. Stuff like Gallant Haven really comes into play. So there's some, there's a lot of plays here. Like with this upgrade card, this particular upgrade card, you could really, really see squadrons coming to the fore now. And then of course, another great squadron fighter coordination team. And this is just a support, but after you execute a maneuver, you may select a number of unengaged friendly squadrons up to your squadron value at close medium range. Those squadrons may now move up to distance one. So again, bonus movement, a lot of, a lot, I mean, this is just, you start comboing and thinking about all these maneuvers and uh, getting all these extra speed. It's kind of crazy. Flechette torpedoes, I'm not so hot on. It's ordnance. Basically what happens is uh, you can spend a black dice with a crit icon to toggle its activation slider to the activated side. So basically you take away their ability to activate, assuming they don't have a way to get around that. But at a 25% chance on a black dice, I feel like you're better off shooting that black dice at something else. I don't know. But whatever. And maybe there's something I'm not seeing here. Let me know in the comments. I'm just not feeling that one. Phoenix Home, you gain one additional officer icon in your upgrade bar. Hmm, that could be super useful. You can be assigned up to four command tokens instead of a number of command tokens equal to your command value. Okay, that's pretty dope. Gives you options. Major Durlin, before you suffer damage from an attack, you may exhaust this card to reduce the total damage by one. For seven, I think he's high costed, but you know, how many times is that going to happen in a game? Well, technically, you get shot at starting in sometimes turn two, mostly to three, four, and five, possibly, you know, longer. You're only going to have take away one damage there. I don't feel like it on a bigger ship, it's worth it. On a smaller ship, it's probably worth it just because you're only going to have two shields on your sides and things like that. So, but then again, it starts making some of them smaller ships cost, you know, 60, 70 points, and that starts to get a little pricey. So that is the Phoenix Home expansion. Now let's skip over the fighters and talk about the light cruiser. So this little bad boy is very similar to uh, the Phoenix Home we just showed you. Pull out its upgrade cards here. And what I wanted to show you was the ship itself, which is on the same size stand. Like I don't understand why this one is $20 and comes in the same size stand and everything as you know the I guess because I don't maybe one one's on the TV show one's not. I don't <laughs> I don't know the pricing here. I'm not a I'm not a priceologist. I don't know how the stuff works, but I can tell you this much that this is literally the same ship just for the bad guys and is a very very similar. So let's take a look at this. Let the camera focus in and do its camera stuff. So there it is. We've seen this bad boy before. In numbers, they can do some work of course in all the shows and TV cartoons and things very cool stuff very well detailed highly you know very well painted ffg does a great job sourcing these things and getting the stuff done right from the get-go that's why we love the ffgs all right as far as upgrades and other fun things well you might notice this guy's a little different he does the side arc shuffle so he does a lot more damage out of out of the side arc which is kind of weird Technically, Imperials don't normally do that, but hey, we're uh, they're maybe they're just trying something else different. They're like, hey, well, you know, we gave the we gave the Rebels a ship that can do really good out of its front. Maybe we'll give the Imperials a ship that can do really good out of its side, and we'll just we'll just trick everybody and <laughs> you guys figure it out. All right, cool, that's fair enough. 
So it shoots, shoots really good out of its sides, not as wide of an arc right there. It's more of like an obtuse kind of weird looking thing with the, like this huge spread in the back and kind of like a more of a, a acute angle at the front that's i don't know i don't know what to make of that it's very it's a very weird firing arc but it gives you lots of options if you if you kind of do some tight turns you can get those shots off for sure it does come with four defensive tokens you got your evades you got your well not four different ones excuse me but you know you know what i mean here so you got your evades you got your redirects and you got your contain now, what's so cool about this? Well, traditionally, Imperials don't have evade, so that opens up some opportunities, I feel like. All right, so we got Moff Jerry, boom, and Mr. Tua, damage control officer, engineering team we've seen in the past, reinforced blast doors, dual turbo laser turret, hand of justice, and Centicore are our two ship titles on this one. So right off the bat, I can tell you there's some winners and losers here. I don't exactly get how dual turbo lasers uh, turrets work. I guess basically you can exhaust it to get a red die. So normally you wouldn't have a red die. Now you have a long range shot. I feel like at five points, it's not that great. But I'm not saying that it doesn't have options in play. I'm just saying it's not. it wouldn't be my go-to at the turbo laser slot. Hand of Justice, before you reveal a command, you may exhaust this card to choose another friendly ship at one to five and ready one of its defensive tokens. That's really good. Like, let me tell you how much I would like to have an additional brace or perhaps uh, a redirect, you know, on, on ISD or even on the freaking Gladiator to just to give it that one lex extra ounce of, hey, let me get away and limp back around and get another, you know, volley off. It could mean a, a really big difference, like game changer right there. Centacore when another friendly ship resolves squadron command up to two of those squadrons is activates can be at close medium range of that ship so a little bit more squadron manipulation there reinforced blast doors at the start of the ship phase you may discard this card and, and discard up to three of your face down damage cards for five i feel like that is a total win all day every day at the uh shoot what is that symbol right there that's the countermeasure nope the defensive retrofit you think with offensive re retrofit i remember defensive but i never do so there's a way to get that, and you're probably like, wait, what ship has that? Well, as it turns out, we're about to show you. Engineering team, we've seen that one before. Damage control officer, when you resolve the, crit uh, the contained defense effect, you can prevent the attacker from resolving any additional critical effects. Remember, contain just basically keeps you from doing a face up with your critical. It doesn't keep you from doing any other additional critical effects. So this would in that instance. So that's probably worth a five right there. Now, I think this is a great deal here. For two points, Mr. Tua, you gain one additional defensive upgrade icon on your bar. You cannot equip this card to a medium or large ship that already has the icon in its upgrade guard. But as everybody knows, the victory does not have one of those. So this is great. This is a win for the victory, right? Uh, but stuff like the ISD2 does so whatever you do your own thing we'll do ours and there's other ships that, they, that this will go great on as well so this is a win because now i can allow you to take things like this ecm etc etc moff jerry during a friendly ship's uh determined core step it may suffer one damage to change its first yaw value of its current speed to two until the end of its activation Basically what this does is it allows you to perform really, really tight turns with ships that normally couldn't do it. Things like the Victory, which is super slow, it only has a speed of 2, but it is really hampered on the yaw. The, the easiest way to get around a Victory is to just drive alongside of it and then you're like, whatever, <laughs> see you later. Now the ISD is a little bit more maneuverable and could definitely benefit by this, but I feel like at the end of the day, this super benefits victories and taking victories and then being able to put a defensive upgrade on it right here is a super win for any player out there you know, with a bunch of victories in their little you know army transport box they're just collecting dust right now because that is a real win right there take this guy take her and then do whatever you want if you want to take ecms or whatever and the victory really becomes basically like a 30 to 40 point cheaper ISD at that point and then I mean it's kind of off the races at that point you can't outmaneuver them and with some you know cunning uh, planning you can do the Lord's work with that so there's those ships and of course you know 
we will look at the cruiser itself upgrade card. Here they are. Again, very similar to what we just saw with the Phoenix Home, except for it's a little faster. So you've got a speed of up to three, but only two yaws at the furthest point. So that's really interesting, okay? So you're gonna have to do some maneuvering and do a little things to really be super tight, but it is quick and that's what's pretty crucial. Of course it has the uh, two redirects and the evades as well. The difference between the two besides the five points is just squadron values and of course the defensive uh, anti-squadron. And then if you wanna do the close in versus uh, the blue dice over here, that's just uh, vice versa. Now, as far as upgrades go, you can also take a support on this, whereas you only get the officer, defensive, and turbo lasers on the light uh, cruiser version as opposed to the command. But remember, you can always take that upgrade card and boom, there it is for only two points more. So it's you know kind of up to you at that point. But these clocking in at the points they are, 20 points under a victory, I think stock, uh, definitely should not be underestimated by any means by any player out there. All right, it's fighter time. So we've got these two, we've got the last two here. So we've got the new Imperial fighters and the Rebel fighter squadrons too. So nothing super, super crazy in here. It seems like a lot of the cool fighter uh, pilots are gonna be in the Corellian Conflict upgrade box, which uh, we're obviously going to get to next. So here is the graphics, little card. The sliders here, you've got uh, Mount Steel, uh, Commander, or Colonel Judden, and I forget who that is supposed to be. And then the Decimator pilot as well. I also forgot her name, but she's pretty cool. We're gonna talk about her in a second. Oh, the uh, that was the TIE, TIE Phantom. So then we got the TIE Phantom and Whisper. Apparently this is a double seated. And the Lambdas, the Decimator, and the TIE Defender. So here's the pilots, no upgrade cards included. Brand new fighter expansion coming our way. So there's the Phantom, uh, pretty cool mechanic. I mean, it's speed four, hull, four hull points. You got four defense, two against ships. It's 14 points, 20 points for the Whisper. Basically what it does with the cloak is it just lets you go an extra distance one, even if you're engaged. You're like, deuces, I'm going at distance one. And then Whisper, if you're defended against attack, you may spend a D and you spend a defense token, you may move it up to a distance one. And then of course you can cloak at the end of the squadron phase, you can get away again. So you can get up to an extra two away. With it a speed of four, that doesn't seem too bad to me. Lambda class shuttle is the uh, dramatic foil of the ghost over for the rebels. It's heavy, it has relay two, another new mechanic. Uh, where you basically any friendly ship resolves a, a squadron command up to two of the squadrons it can activate can be a distance one to three of the lambda class shuttle so if they're out of position doesn't matter they'll get up there and be able to activate so that's really cool so a lot of new squadron mechanics and then strategic that's that thing where basically if you come within distance one of an objective token you can move it a distance one away so you'd be like oh hey cool objective well, let me scoot that behind me throw it towards my homie back there to score it and get some points on the board then we got colonel uh, jedden he basically says during your activation, instead of attacking, you may choose one friendly squadron at distance one to two. That squadron may perform an attack even if he is already attacked or activated rather. I feel like that's pretty good too. <laughs> so some really cool stuff there. The decimator I'm really impressed with for anti-squadron at, at three black. That's just going to rip through stuff. It has counter one, which is really interesting too. Heavy. It doesn't prevent things from, you know, flying by, but it does have a rogue. So it is going to activate and do its own thing, just like the honey badger. And then Mor Morana Key, I guess that's how you say her name. Uh, win. Attacking, you may spend one defensive dice to reroll any number of dice in your attack pool. When you activate, or excuse me, one defensive token, when you activate, you may recover one of your discarded defense tokens. So you're already gonna spend it, so it's gonna be on red. And then if you need to use it because you get shot, well, you just burn it because when you activate again, next turn, you get it back. So it just kind of wash, rinse, repeat. Again, this really great three blue against ships, four, or excuse me, three black against uh, squadrons. It's just it, three black. Oof! I just I just shudder at that. It was, ain't gonna last long against that. Let me tell you what. Then we got Merrick Steel. When attacking, you may change one of the dice to a face with a crit, which is really awesome because you know that on the black die, if you don't roll it, there's one with a hit and one with a crit. So boom, right off the bat, that helps for anti-squadron. 
I mean, it's just, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just doing work right there. Bomber and grit as well. And then the just straight up defender squadron just has bomber. 20, uh, 16 points, 21, 27. So, you know, straight up Boba Fett status right here, which I feel like it's, it's that good with eight hull. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a fan. I'm kind of a fan. I want to see how it plays out on the tabletop right there. Now, uh, normally we would put these together, but we assembled some of them off camera so there you can kind of see the defenders and the decimator and then we've got the little lambda flying casual do 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 so obviously these are out of scale because we know the armada is not something that is in scale and the squadron of phantoms right there so pretty cool neat little ships you get two of each and i think they're 20 dollars retail we'll go with that 20 dollars retail Next up is the Rebel Fighter Squadron, dun, dun, dun. and of course these have the remaining, I guess, you know, ships slash heroes that weren't covered in the first one. So got some, uh, got some favorites here, like the Z95. Here you can see the cards and the little illustrations on there. Oop. So we got Hera, uh, Cornhorn, I think that's uh, Lieutenant Blunt. And the Shadowcaster pilot, which, funny story, we'll get to that in a second. Alright, so here, so let's zoom out a little bit for you guys, because I realize this is probably cramping the style. Okay, so there's the Z95s, and Lieutenant Blount, and the E-Wing, Cornhorn, then we got the Ghost, and Hera, because why not? And the Lancer class, Pursuit class, aka the Shadowcaster with Ketsu. In there now, Ketsu actually is voiced um, by Gina Torres, who is you know Firefly alumni. So that's the second Firefly alumnus to cross over with uh, Alan Tudyk, of course, in Rogue One to cross over to Star Wars, which is really cool. I dig it. So you got Headhunter Squadron with Swarm. It's just throwing three and one against ships, which makes sense because they're cheap, cheaper than a Tie Fighter, but it does some work. When another, um, then we got Lieutenant Blunt. When another friendly squadron with Swarm at distance one is attacking, it may reroll one dice in addition to any dice rerolled from Swarm. So it's kind of like Headhunter, or uh, kind of like um, what's her face from the Imperial side on the Tie Fighters, but more of a Rebel type version. So that's kind of cool. Then we got the two E Wings. Of course, you got Cornhorn, the named pilot at 22, and the normal E Wing squadron at 15. Now they have the new snipe mechanic which basically allows you to get around the counter mechanic but only throw three dice at it so a lot going on here so snipe three snipe four of course cornhorn has rogue and bomber at 22 i feel like he's a solid buy right there with two braces and then ewing squadron just has bomber then we got ketsu in the single lancer cla uh, cra class pursuit craft bomber grit and rogue when an enemy squadron is at distance one, its speed is reduced by two to a minimum of one. So that can be pretty crippling for a lot of ships out there, I feel like. And then just normal Lancer at 15 has all of those same special abilities, but no pilot ability. Then we got the Ghost, or the not Ghost, because it's just the VCX-100 freighter. Heavy, Relay 1, we already talked about that with the shuttle. And Strategic, yay, get to move around objectives. Get them points on the board. And then Hera herself in the squadron phase choose up to two friendly squadrons at distance one, two, and these squadrons gain rogue until the end of the turn. So there, boom, you put her in and all of your cool pilots immediately have rogue and you're doing all sorts of stuff in the squadron phase or out, you know, you get to activate for free. Everybody gets to activate within one to two, up to two, but still everybody, mostly. <laughs> okay, not really, but she's cool. I th I'm really digging her. Like squadrons are in full effect now in this expansion. If you're not on the squadron bandwagon, I think you might want to look at, what is it? 133 points out of 400 that you really need to start uh, thinking about allocating out to some solid squadrons because they are definitely coming in hot. Here is the headhunter on the little stand, and then of course the E-Wing. And we all know that's definitely out of scale. <laughs> Especially when you see the ghost. Ghost is so big, but so small compared to the ships. And then the shadow caster, which makes more sense, but still, we know. <laughs> Not the right scale. So there they are. The new 
fighter pack. So overall, I think this is, like I said at the beginning, is a really great expansion, uh, really interesting uh, new mechanics in here, introducing squad synergy, uh, expanded uh, fire mechanics, switching out dice at different ranges, uh, you know, doing all sorts of things with defense mechanics, allowing you to get defensive tokens back that you wouldn't normally get. And then of course, a uh, new fleet command upgrade and all those new abilities on the fighters as well. So as we progress more and more into the, the successive waves in this game, it is getting more complicated, of course, but I don't feel like in an unmanageable way and it's definitely going to force more people to play with squadrons right off the bat, but also give the folks that have all the old ships from Wave 1 and Wave 2, and Wave 3 for that matter, uh, the ability to play with them again and make them a little bit more better without having to uh, uh, purchase new new items. So if you're, if you're purchasing the new releases, you've got stuff that'll allow you to play with the stuff you already had more better, <laughs> and without having to buy a completely separate release like an Imperial Aces or a Rebel Aces like they do in Star Wars X-Wing. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Questions, comments, errors, omissions, leave it below and we will try to answer them all. Spiky bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel check out our site spikybits.com for all the hot hobby tutorials news rumors on all your favorite hobby topics and head on over to the longwar.net that's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content early access videos and more become a veteran of the long war today